Today, every wrong step could bring disaster as our players attempt to cross over this bridge and win a prize package worth $2,500. Watch now as they brave the dangers to win thousands of dollars on Pitfall. Hey, Madeline, you're standing on a pitfall. And you grabbed the rail, Billy June. I think that's not a pitfall. Oh, shoot, it was. Now, here's the man that guided through all the pitfalls, Alex Trebek. Okay, we're all set to get things fired up here on our program. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for the intro, John Barton. We're in a moment. We're going to go down and meet the players up close. But before we do that, I want to take just a few seconds to explain how we play our game. I ask questions. We provide the audience with four different answers. The audience picks the answer they like the most by a selector switch at each seat, and then it's up to the contestants to figure out what the audience's number one response to the question was. That's how they earn points. That's how they win games and go on to play our pitfall round for the big prizes. Sounds simple? It's not. Let's meet the players. First of all, our challenger, a lovely lady who spends her time between her job as a salesperson and her 11-year-old daughter. A big welcome to Billie Jean Welch. <laughs> And let's welcome back our challenger, who already has won over $6,000, Madeline Paul. Ladies, Madeline's applauding herself because she has done well. $6,100 in cash Hard prizes and holidays to enjoy. Billie Jean, Hi. welcome aboard. Nice Jean. to have you here. Is your 11-year-old daughter in the audience? She sure is. Going to cheer mom on to victory, we hope. Better. Well, if uh, you do win, the score will appear behind you on the scoreboard. As many as five points can be earned. If you get to five before Madeline does, then you automatically win. Or if you're leading when you hear this sound, you'll go on to play the pitfall round. Good luck to you. And to our audience, this question. Why is it some people keep old love letters, do you feel? Is it for old time's sake? Is it for a laugh? Is it to show their children, or is it as evidence? Which one is it going to be? Vote for one, two, three, or four. Madeline, do you have any old love letters in your closet or in your bureau? I sure have. I've got some of the very first ones my husband ever wrote me, and I keep them for old time's sake. Okay, Billy. Okay, I think number two, a laugh. For a laugh, exactly sure. the opposite of Madeline. All right, we have two extremes represented by your two replies. Let's see if the audience agrees with one of you. What did you have to say, folks? You keep for old times' sake. Nice straight ahead group here, Billy. We'll have to watch them. Oh, here's a ticklish situation. A woman who regales her new boyfriend with tales of his predecessors is what? Is she tactless, insecure, nasty, or dumb. Oh. She's telling her new boyfriend all about his predecessors, Billie Jean. Oh, I think I'll say she's tactless. Tactless? It doesn't yeah. sound very good, no. does it, for a girl to do that? Madeline? I think she's dumb. Dumb. <laughs> this time, both of you are in basic agreement. It's just a question <laughs> of degree. Let's see what the audience thought of this. They said tactless. <laughs> and that's a point for Billie Jean. There are a number of things that can improve our appearance and the impression we make on other people, so you tell me right now. What do women find sexiest on a man? A gold chain, an open shirt, nice aftershave lotion, or a suede jacket? What do women find sexiest on a man? Madeline? Well, I think I would go for an uh, open shirt. Okay. I'd go for know. a 25-year-old girl, but that's... <laughs> well, that's not what you said, though. <laughs> that's not on this program. Billie Jean. Um, hmm. Well, I'll try aftershave. Aftershave, yeah. the scents, the perfumes. Women are very sensitive to that kind of thing. Let's see what this audience had to say on this. Their preference was an open shirt. <laughs> a point for Madeline. We're going back and forth with you two ladies. Each time you get to select first, you earn the point. It's important that ladies avoid the no bra fad, but after what age? 18, 25, 30, or 12? You want to avoid the no bra fad after what age? Billie Jean. Well, I would say after 25. Okay. Madeline? I think some better stick to it by 18. 18. I'll start avoiding it after that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in our, let's see, we have, hmm, I guess about an equal representation of ladies and gentlemen. So, what was your preference? 25. 
five. Billy ties it up, two points apiece. Think of your present romance in baseball terms. How would the umpire call it? Safe, out, strike, or ball? Madeline? That's pretty hard to judge, but looking at the audience, I'd say strike. Okay. Billie Jean. Oh, I'm going to say Just be glad we didn't uh, look at it in terms of uh, football. <laughs> ball and strike. Audience, what is it? Safe. Oh. No points. Oh. We have to go to this question to break the tie, it seems. Men like their women to be a little cuddly, a little cute, a little sexy, or a little crazy. Which is it going to be? Men with regard to their women. Billy, you could take the lead and become our new champion. Mm-hmm. Is it my turn to go? Yeah, it's your turn to go first. Okay, I'll say, oh, I'll say sexy. Want their women to be a little sexy. Madeline. I'll have to take cuddly. Two different approaches to the same problem. Audience, your preference in this grouping was sexy also. A point for Billy. Mm, all right. I am really unbearable when I'm waking up, when I'm sick, when I'm tired, or when I'm moody. I'm unbearable with one of those situations. Give me a reading now. Okay, they're all set, so let's go to you, Madeline. And you tie I'll it have up. to go with uh, tired. Yeah, that's a good one. Well, if I'm going to tell the truth, I'm going to have to say waking up. Oh, in the morning. You're not a morning person. Okay, we're going to get a quick reading on this, Madeline. If you've uh, assessed the audience correctly, it'll be tied, and we'll go to a tiebreaker question. What did you think, folks? Waking up. That means Billy gets it, and she's our new pitfall champion. Come on over here with me. Madeline, you've got over $6,100 in all those prizes. I hope you enjoy the holiday. I Take care of the winning. So long, Bye. you're a good champ. Thanks. We'll be back to continue on Pitfall after this. A little bit of a correction I have to make. I've been calling our champion Billy Jean for the last five minutes or so, and her real name is Billy June. I'm sorry about That's that. Okay. But you did well. You got four points, two pit passes, and yeah. uh, you dethroned a very good champion. Now you're going to get your first shot up there on that bridge that leads to all those wonderful prizes. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to turn around and concentrate on the light show. Try to spot the pitfalls, the sections that light up two times, mm -hmm. and then you can come back and select two pit passes. All right? Okay. Here we go. I think I've got all three of them this time. I was paying very good attention. Good. I think Pick two. Two? I'll say number, number two, two and number five. Hey, way to go. I think you did it well. Come on. Lady knows, knows about pitfalls. She says, all I have to worry about are two because I've only got two passes, so I don't know where the third one was. I think it was number four. Give me correct answers, though, and you don't have to worry about anything because you'll just keep earning do uh, money. 100, 200, 300, 400 dollars, and then when you get to this spot, you get a prize, and John, tell us about it. Well, here's a prize to make your cooking a lot easier, Billy June. It's a compact microwave oven from Electrohome with variable power levels and simple push-button controls. Every meal can be quick and delicious. And if you get from this position and keep moving along, $100 for six, for seven, for eight, and at the end, we probably have a very enjoyable holiday for you. We certainly do. It's a holiday for two. In the city where the action is, it's Las Vegas. You'll stay at Del Webb Sahara Las Vegas, where you can enjoy it all from superstar entertainment to the Congo showroom and Casbah Theater to superb dining, a dazzling trip, and lush accommodations from Del Webb Sahara Las Vegas, where the action never stops. We have a lot of action going right here. Let's see if we can get a good roll going for you. 100 seconds on the clock, please. And now... This question, what is Archie Bunker's wife's name? Edith. Edith is right, go to number one. 
You're there for $100 and you're safe. This name is shared by a candy bar and a legendary baseball player. What is it? Uh, I got pass. No, not yet. Give me a correct oh. answer. Oh, uh, pass. <laughs> oh, Babe Ruth. Which Turkish city used to be called Constantinople? Oh, pass. Istanbul. Oh. What kind of an animal are crocodiles and alligators? Reptiles. Reptiles is absolutely right. Now you give me the pit pass and you go to number three. Good, you've got $300. What is General Lee on the Dukes of Hazard? Uh, policeman? No, it's a car. In which kingdom did the wizard that Dorothy visited Oz. live? Oz is right. You go to number four and you're going down. Sorry about that. You've got a little bit less than a minute. So that's pretty good going. You're almost halfway there. What's the first name of a famous comedian named Hope? Bob. Right, bring her up. Piece of cake on that question. <laughs> Clock will start when I begin. Okay. So don't worry. You ready? Ready. What award-winning film did Robert Redford direct? St oh, no, it wasn't St. Pass. Ordinary people. Right. Name the famous brothers who flew their airplane at Kitty Hawk. Right. The Wright brothers is correct. Uh, Give me the pass for number five. Wind up on number six. To which Ewing brother is Pam married? Oh, pass. To Bobby, what kind of music would you associate with Merle Haggard? Country. Country, country western. Yep, oh. come on to seven. <laughs> How many heavyweight boxing championships has Muhammad Ali won? Seven. No, three. What's the last name of acting family members Jane, Peter, and Henry? Fonda. Fonda is right. Go to number eight. After the bullfight, what parts of the bull do they give the matador? The ears. The ears and the tail, absolutely. Okay. Which one's your daughter? Bobby, right over there. Hi, Bobby. Oh, excited. She should be. You've got yourself a $2,500 holiday and the opportunity to continue and add to your prize winnings if you get up here again. And we'll put you into another match against an opponent right after we take this commercial break. There they go. Two, four, and five. He's brought two out of the three. Nice job. Billy June Welsh, our new pitfall champion. A very happy end, a very surprised lady after that pitfall round. I don't think she expected to do that well her first time out, but she's the champ, and now she gets to defend against this individual. Our next challenger, Alex, is a man of action. He's six foot, six and a half, and holds a black belt in karate. So go ahead, call him a sissy, or say something <laughs> funny about his name. He's Mary <laughs> I'm not going to do any of those things, John. I just want to remind Merle that I do not have a black belt in karate. I've got a teeny brown belt, and hanging from that brown belt is a 357 Magnum. <laughs> We're going to play the game now, my way, right, Merle? Okay. Okay, you got it. Ladies and gentlemen, holidays, although a lot of fun, can bring about some degree of stress. So which of these do you find causes you the most pressure? Would it be the Easter holiday, Halloween, Christmas, or New Year's? One, two, three, or four. Get a vote going on that one, and we'll hear from Billy June. Um, God, Christmas. That causes you the most stress? Oh, all the shopping, and year after year. All year after year, yeah, well, it comes once a year. Well, finding presents, I know, finding presents. But you've only got one child. Well, no, we got a lot of family. Oh, all right. Merle, what about you? Well, I'm gonna take the best answer up there, and that's number four. New Year's, a lot of stress, a lot of pressure associated with that. Perhaps yeah. the resolutions that we keep making and breaking. Audience, how did you interpret this question? Which one is your favorite in this group? Christmas brings the most pressure. Billy June gets her point. Think of the television newscasts you've been watching lately, and in particular, the newscasters. What do you think about them? Do you think they try to be too brief, too sensational, too cute, or too condescending? Which one of those would apply to the television newscasters you watch? Merle? Well, we know that Howard Cassell is sensational. They try to be too sensational. Billy? Um, I'm going to say they try to be too cute. All right, that's always a danger for those of us in television. Let's see if the audience agrees with one of you two or if they went for brief or condescending. Audience? Sensational! And sensational it is for Merle, who gets his first Pit pass and his first point of the game. It's unfortunate, maybe, but uh, the one thing most parents never discuss with their children is what? Alcohol, <laughs> drugs, politics, or sex? <laughs> most parents never discuss this with their children. Billy, how old's your daughter? She's 11. 11. Have you discussed all of these things with her? No. No? Well, what do you think? Most parents uh, never discuss one of these. Which uh, one? 
God. Um, they discuss God. Yes. <laughs> oh, I think I'll do, I'll put politics. Oh, did you hear that low murmur of disapproval come it. out of the audience? You have just given Merle an opportunity mm. to uh, move ahead in this match, I feel. Go ahead, Merle. Well, you bet. There's only one answer. They never discuss sex with their children. Why did you press drugs? <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. You may be big and you may have a black belt, but you ain't too bright. <laughs> Okay, folks, I don't want to say anything uh, insulting about our contestants, but Merle is down a court. Okay, he meant to say, he meant to say sex, uh, so we're going to give him the number four, right? Because that was an accident. He said sex and he just wasn't looking. Let's see what the audience had to say. Most parents never discuss sex. That's a point for you. Merle gets it. Very, very good way to celebrate an anniversary, folks, is to share something. What do you want to share? A romantic dinner, a champagne, uh, memories, or a bubble bath? <laughs> the best way to celebrate an anniversary. Merle, you tell me. Well, I just had mine, so I can only say that it has to be a romantic dinner. That's good. Could include champagne, I suppose. Billy? And a nice uh, bubble bath. I think I'll pick champagne. It's always nice. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Audience, celebrating an anniversary, you want... A romantic dinner. Well, it goes again. Three to one. He's leading at the moment. How important is it to have lots of money? Is it very important? Somewhat important? Is it absolutely essential? Or is it unimportant? To have lots of money. Billy, you need this point to get I back into the thick point. of this match. Um, I would say somewhat. All right. Merle? Well, I think think that it's very important to have money, so I'm going to take number one. Very for you, somewhat for her, and the audience thought that it was somewhat important. They agreed with Billy, and she gets her second point. Here's a nice question. When you see somebody who is very sexy at a party, what's the best way to get their attention? Is it to smile, to wink, to speak, or to beckon? <laughs> Come here, little girl. Merle? That's a tough one. I think I'm going to have to go with the audience and say smile. Okay. We have a lot of smilers up there. Billy? If you see a sexy person? A sexy at a person party? at a party. What's um, the best way to get their attention? I think you may as well go and talk to them. Yeah. Pick the obvious. Great speak. Forward. Of course, the audience may have thought of smiling before yeah, they yeah, speak. Yeah. Let's find out right now if we've got a tie match. What did they say? They said smile. <laughs> that means Merle takes the lead. <laughs> Four to two, and you're the new champion. Thank you. Easy, I've got a, an injured hand. Congratulations. Stand over here. <laughs> Billy Jr., you were champion for a brief time, but you made it pay off. Congratulations to you. Hold on, Merle. You and I are backing away, and we're coming back to play the pitfall round right after this. Go! Boy, see how excited they got when they saw me go into my number three pose? <laughs> this is our new pitfall champion, Merle Campbell, who is a black belt in judo. He doesn't need any of those skills to make it pay off in this round of our show. All he has to do is be very observant with the light program and then pick the passes that will help him the most. Turn around, concentrate right. on the bottom section here, Merle. <laughs> I've got three aced up. You tell me. You can pick two. Three and six. I think you got them absolutely right. And it works out for you. And seven also. I think you're right all the way. You might as well hold on to them while John tells us about some of the prizes you could win. First of all, Merle, if you make it as far as square number five, here's a gift that's sure to see a lot of use. It's the Electrohome 14-inch color television set. Compact and light. It covers all VHF and UHF channels in a handsome design to fit any room in your home. Then, Merle, if you make it all the way, you can step from mountaintop to mountaintop because we have a fabulous one-week vacation for two in beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. Good. Enjoy the ultra-modern Hotel Zurich in the heart of the city on the banks of the Lamont River. Gourmet food and famous Swiss hospitality at the Hotel Zurich. Well, if you're going to make it all the way, Merle, you have two passes in your hand, so that means that you're going to go down on one pitfall. How much do you weigh? Uh, about 275. 275. That elevator's going to go down with a thud, I fear. <laughs> Let's have 100 seconds on the clock, please. 
What's the last name of the cartoon characters Blondie and Dagwood? Plumstead. Right. Move on to number one. You're there in safety for $100. What do the initials VIP stand for? Very important person. Right. Go on. Steve Lawrence is half of this husband and wife singing team. Who is his wife? Pass. Edie Gourmet. What are the first names of the Duke boys on Dukes of Hazard? Pass. Bo and Luke. Which city is a holy place for Christians, Jews, and Muslims? Mecca. No, Jerusalem. What color would you get by mixing red and blue? Brown. Purple. What kind of meat would you expect to find in your goulash? Lamb. No, beef. How many days are there in the month of December? <laughs> 31. Right. Now you can go to <laughs> three, pass. but you've got to pass, so you'll wind up on number four. What bar does the TV character Flo own? Pass. The Yellow Rose of Texas. Who's the black-jacketed character on TV's Happy Days? Fawns. Fawns is right. You go to five. You've got the prize. What's the last name of TV talk show host Dick? Cabot. Cabot is right. Pit pass for number six. Come along to number seven, and we figured you were going down on that, and you are, with about half a minute showing on the clock, Merle. Okay, so it's still within reach for you. Listen carefully to this question. Which Western hero is known as the Masked Crusader? Lone Ranger. Right, bring him up. Hi Two more correct answers, and you've got 19 seconds in which to do it. Okay. Have you been to Switzerland? No. Okay. You got a shot at it right here. Name the well-known young actor who used to play one of Mr. Cotter's sweat hogs. Horshack. No, John Travolta. What animal is known as the clown of the Antarctic? Pass. Penguin. What is the common name for a sweater that buttons down the front? Cardigan. Cardigan is right. Quick. In what state would we find the Alamo? Texas. Texas, we got it. With... <laughs> One second. About that. Okay. Woo! That was exciting. We've got to say goodbye. You want to come back on our next show? Love to. Love to? All right. Love to. Merle Campbell, the champ, will return, and we hope to have the pleasure of your company as well, ladies and gentlemen, on our next edition of Pitfall. Come on. Next wardrobe is provided by Murray Goldman with 12 locations in Vancouver. This is John Barton speaking. Pitfall is a presentation of Catalina Productions.